was at a ramen shop in the East Village in New York uh, called Setagaya, and I knew what ramen was, but I didn't have the love affair. I'll never forget it, just the, the, the texture of the noodles and how delightfully gluttonous and nourishing it felt all in, in one go. Uh, my name is Justin Warner. I'm originally from Hagerstown, Maryland, uh, but I've relocated now to Rapid City, South Dakota. Okajo means ranch or pasture, and we wanted to come up with a name that would kind of give a nod to the people who make it all happen. Uh, without ranchers and farmers, uh, well, there wouldn't be any food. And so uh, I'm really just putting the finishing touches on an already beautiful product. Brooke essentially, I think, had the idea that a ramen shop would be ideal. When we moved here and realized there were no ramen shops West River, South Dakota, we had to figure out how to make it work. Justin realized we were in cattle country and that using local ingredients is kind of a key aspect of ramen making. Basically, we wanted to bring the flavors of South Dakota through Japanese cuisine. Um, you know, we like to say we're a South Dakota ramen restaurant. While we do have a lot of Japanese influence, we try and show everything that we love about Japan, but through our South Dakota cuisine. Uh, this is the, uh, the protein topping for the bison bone ramen. Uh, we've used up all the bison bones for this week, but normally we get them in. Sometimes the knuckles are like, I mean, they're huge. They're like the size of grapefruits. Trotters, pig's feet, Hutterite chicken feet. So it's another cool way to use a product that most people don't eat and turn it into something. It's from uh, Lake Andes, South Dakota. Well, uh, bison and cattle aren't, aren't too far off. They're both ruminant animals, meaning that they have multi-chambered stomachs. Uh, and when I, I realized that I could get bison bone from a wild idea buffalo company. I thought, well, I'll just put it into one of our recipes, swap it out pound for pound and, and see what comes out. And what came out was just this magical broth with this kind of flavor that I don't think many of us have ever particularly understood because it's never been done before. I called some friends in Japan and asked, hey, has anyone ever done bison bone ramen? And the answer was, no, we don't think so. We don't really have bison here. We're Japan. <laughs> So I say that there are as many styles of ramen as there are people making the ramen. It's really doing it to your taste uh, and understanding what you like and what you think your guests will like. We sell on average about 110 or so per day. And I find that people eventually figure out which ramen is their ramen. And they say that's mine and that's the one that I will have pretty much every time they come in. Uh, people were really excited and it was great uh, until we were like, <laughs> Sorry, you guys are going to have to wait a little bit longer than we anticipated, but for the most part, everyone was okay with that because they were excited about getting to try something new. Uh, I think the beef bone ramen is the, the best expression of the way I like to eat. Uh, it's, it's salty, it's got punch, uh, it's rich. Uh, your mouth feels... Uh, like you just put chapstick on after you ate it, um, but it's beef flavored chapstick. And uh, yeah, it's just everybody finds their fave, you know? I think ultimately the people that deserve it are the people who provide the food to begin with. And with you know ranchers and farmers being 2% of the population that feeds the other 98%, I think putting a, a restaurant that focuses on Celebrating agriculture in an agricultural area uh, is kind of a no-brainer. You, you think of South Dakota as being less fast-paced, and it is, but that's because you can get your work done so much more quickly because you have less interference and less traffic and less headache. I hope we inspire other younger couples or business people to open up whatever they think they can make happen here. And I think the ramen shop being so successful shows that the town is excited for new things. At the end of the day, it's a $15 bowl of soup. Um, if it changes your life, great. But if it doesn't, you know, it was only a $15 bowl of soup, let's be honest. Like, I have a lot of pride for the product, but I also understand that, you know, it's just going to get digested like everything else. <laughs>